Hey, Mando Fandos! Welcome back to the Mando Fan Show. This is episode eight, and we're gonna call this one Taika One for the Team. Oh my god. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. John's best right. jokes are these episode titles. Those are my best? Yeah, I think so. Yikes. So people who didn't <laughs> like that are like, well, I'm done with that guy. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Um, no, but thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Uh, we're going to be talking about Chapter 8 of The Mandalorian, which is called Redemption. A little bit more boring of a title than, than mine, I think, but that's okay. Uh, the episode, though, was not boring, but joining me, as always, is James and Lacey. How are you guys doing? Doing great, man. Wrapping up the Mando show. Yes. I'm good. Lacey just gave a wave. Yeah, there she is. Okay. Uh, and our <laughs> special guest this week um, has been on the Resistance broadcast about two years ago now, which is crazy to think. Pre-Last Jedi, right? And yes. Yeah. And at that time, you were just <laughs> starting a podcast with your buddies uh, about movies and TV. And now it's uh, really become one of the top viewed TV, movie, and, and pop culture podcasts out there from Lights, Camera, Barstool. Jeff Lowe. What's up, Jeff? Not much. Yeah. How's it going? It has been a long time. That's kind of... And I've lost my voice. This, I told you guys pre-pop, but, but now <laughs> right. I will tell you mid-show, I... My voice is shot. I was sick. But yeah, much simpler time the last time I was on this. Pre-Last Jedi. It just <laughs> it's pretty me. Star Wars. I didn't exist. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. true. This is a different, different show. Yeah, it's a... Gosh, it was... Star Wars is very different now. <laughs> Two and a half years later, almost three. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you bring up a good point because I think about Star Wars always goes canon like BBY, ABY, and now it almost has to be... Before TLJ, after TLJ. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like the true. culture of fandom. Um, whether you love TLJ or not, now I do. I still do, even though some of the fans are starting to get to me. But um, it's it's just a funny, like you said, that is funny. Because back then we were all just like, everything is great in Star Wars and in summer of 2017. And then <laughs> and the toxicity happened. But anyway, we are here to talk about The Mandalorian, which everyone seems to be liking for the most part. So that's a good thing. Um, now, what we do uh, to start off the show, to warm things up, the Pedro Pascal face scale, which is uh, a little different now because we've seen his face on the show. Spoiler alert. Uh, yeah. If you're watching this, you already know, though. It was rough, uh, so though. He was, he was banged up. It was a bad angle, like when you take your photo from below. Yes. Like, you just <laughs> it's just never a good look. Mm. No. Um but needless to say, we go zero to ten here. Halves are included, and then we give our average, and of course, throw it to our patrons. So I'm going to start off. I, I'm I'm ending this season, never tapping into the nines, guys. But this one ties my two Deborah Chow episodes at eight point five. I really liked it a lot. I like the humor, I like the action, I like the shots, and of course, I like the end, which we'll get into later. But um, uh, Jeff, what did you give this episode on the the Pedro scale? I'll I'll toss out a nine. I would say. It's, it's hard. So I'm, I have not disliked any of the episodes, mm-hmm. uh, which okay. is, I, I'm, I guess I'm not on the cynical end, but I, I'm, I'm surprised looking back on it that I liked every single one. This one's definitely up there. Uh, the way they wrapped up the story was fantastic, but again, it still stands on its own where it's enjoyable for the story of what it is without knowing the context of the rest of the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, I love Taika Waititi. He had his hands all over this thing. Uh, his special little touches, whether it's uh, what we do in the shadows or Ragnarok, Jojo Rabbit, like you just you could just tell. Um, even the way they started it out with the troopers, it, it was so perfect, Taika, uh, <laughs> and and the best way to end it, and where you're satisfied but wanting so much more without being disappointed that we didn't get things answered, uh, which is kind of crazy because I this is now the third consecutive TV show but Succession Watchmen and now this where a season finale I haven't been disappointed and, and I feel like this this year was defined in TV by and I'm not a huge Thrones person but people being disappointed in Thrones and now like yeah. I, I don't know for me I don't know finales they've been great so I can't complain on that end yeah that's a good call I mean finales are always uh, a, a point of drama with fans because everyone has their preconceived notions going in I mean, who knows? Maybe because this is just a season finale, some people are like, well, I'll see what happens and how it goes. But um, yeah, good points there. Um, James, what did you give this episode? So, Jeff, I know you normally... That's not a good start. (laughs) Yeah. I know you don't (laughs) normally like keep up with this or whatever, but I'm usually pretty positive about this stuff too. But I was actually a little bit let down on this episode. Hmm. Um, My highest rated episode was six uh, with an 8.5. The next one was an 8.5. 
episode seven, and I thought this one was going to be an eight point five or higher, and seven point five for me. Okay. Um, it lands somewhere around the the first episode for me. Just uh, there were a couple things in it that. Um, it's not even like the story or the direction that it went. I think just a couple things like mistakes, almost uh, continuity wise and things like I kept being pulled out of the episode. So we'll talk a little bit about right. that stuff, but yeah, 7.5 still a good yeah. score for the season overall though. Yeah. And without a doubt. All right, Lacey, where did you sit on this one? 11, 12? <laughs> I loved it. I gave it a 9.5. I think I tied it with uh, episode three, which was my other favorite from the season, which was Deborah mm-hmm. Chow's first episode. Yep. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I've said this before, but if I'm watching a TV episode and I'm like anxious of what's going to happen, that means it's a good episode for me. Like if I'm not bored. So sure. I felt that the whole episode, I didn't know where it was going. So I gave it a 9.5. I that's that's I mean you're right though about the anxiety part of it like I'll get into it later that's how I know it's good like when I hear people go oh that was so great and if I feel anxious then that must mean (laughs) that it's good I mean people like cops wear bulletproof vests because that's your (laughs) that's your highest point of target and IG-11 is wearing Baby Yoda right in the center of his chest. I'm like, what are you doing? And then he's like, spinning around. Yeah. Yeah. I think but, to start the episode where they're punching him, which we'll get into this, like that yeah. immediately I was like out of, <laughs> out of, the, out of the gate, stressed out. I wasn't out. happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So for the four of us, that averages out to an 8.6, a very healthy, very positive score for Taika Waititi, written by John Favreau, to end out season one. Uh, to Jeff's point, sometimes season finales leave people, uh, you know, wanting more than they were expecting, and it looks like for for us anyway, um, it's up there. So, uh, Lacey, our patrons, we always ask our patrons what they scored on the zero to ten Pedro scale. What did they average out on chapter eight? So surprisingly, there were a lot of tens again. Tens. 11 that's not surprising they, th- yeah it is because there were some episodes that there were a lot of sixes this was one of those episodes that everyone was like 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 wow uh, okay they said a nine average, nine all right average nine which is okay. high for them yeah all right very good i'm glad everyone liked it it's one less thing to argue about which is always a good thing um yeah. okay now <laughs> now remember guys if you want to f- be featured on the mando fan show we are going to have one more uh episode which we're not confirming when we're going to do this because it's not an urgent thing but we're going to recap season one uh at some point in the next week or two uh just hashtag mando fando with your thoughts on the season overall over the coming week and uh, we'll grab your tweets and get them on the show uh just like this person here which was james at slow focus and he said i laughed i cried i kissed ig11 goodbye <laughs> So short and sweet, Aww. but um, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, we, we could probably confirm finally this time, James, that IG-11 will not be returning to uh, a galaxy far, far he away. He pulled a Terminator. <laughs> yeah. E- even though my reason for him coming back was that he was never um, compared to IG-88, and yet he still has never been compared to IG-88 yeah, I, in what, the show. What's up with that? Yeah. yeah. I was teased, and I, but, uh, uh, here's my thing. Well, Nick Nolte, alien, dead. Big, big dead, ugh, not big, not coming back. But gone. That that <laughs> ugh, line not, of big, not coming back. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> IG, IG, the IG unit. Maybe, maybe that like certain make could just have Taika's voice. Like, I, so I'm not gonna like. I haven't ruled out the idea that we may still hear Taika Waititi voicing IG droids. Oh, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. which I guess that's kind of cutting corners. But I, so yeah, so I'm I'm still kind of the fence because, like you said, they made that joke. About being compared to IG88, where where was the reference? I yeah. need that. Like, I want I want to hear that because I, I need right. to be fed that that nonsense fan service. I want to hear them reference IG88. So I'm right. still waiting. I'm gonna hold out hope. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I mean, that's a good point. He could just be the un- universal voice um, of that, just kind of like how uh, Tamir Morrison became all the clone troopers in a way. Mm. <clears throat> okay, uh, now guys, if you also want to be on the show and you're a patron, you can speed your way to the top like Todd over here did. Uh, he's a he's an average fan of The Mandalorian, Todd <laughs> DeGrossier. Todd said, 9 out of 10 for me. I laughed, I cried. Everyone's laughing and crying, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> uh, I cheered. This was the perfect way to tie together all the pieces we saw before this and present a very satisfying conclusion while also hinting at what's to come next season. So thank you for that, Todd. Okay. Easter eggs, let's get into it right now. Context is not important. It can be a nod to previous Star Wars, a quote that you know is familiar to you, kind of like that Dave Filoni episode had a lot of those. 
um, or simply objects and Easter eggs. So let's go around each giving one at a time until we run out, and then uh, we'll see where we go from there. But uh, Jeff, you, I know you on your show, um, <laughs> you guys do Easter eggs too, right? Yeah, very. We, we try to find as many as possible. Um, I won't. How go deep do you guys go? Do you guys go like real deep cuts? Deep enough like, for like, I'll, like I'll pick, I'll pick one, my, I, I'll pick two quotes. I, I don't even know if they're references exactly, but they they might be. And I, I won't go ahead and pick the obvious big Easter egg, which ended the episode. I feel like that right, sure, might, sure. might be cheating. I, there were, so there were two quotes that I laughed at. I don't think the first one is a reference, but if it is, I loved it. And um, Moff Gideon had been asked by Grief Cargo, like, I, I guess, like, like, what do you want? Or, like, what's... What's the end game here? And he said, "Reasonable negotiation." And the first thing I thought of was aggressive nego- negotiations from uh, nice. Attack of the Clones, which I don't know if that's a reference. <laughs> if it is, that's hilarious. They've referenced the prequels plenty of times, but the, the the one that I'm pretty confident was on purpose was when uh, when Moff Gideon's Tie Fighter came back around. The way. Uh, Caradun yelled, "Here he comes!" was almost exactly like the way Leia says, "Here they come!" about the Tie Fighters when we first see them attack Millennium Falcon when they leave the Death Star. Uh, that one I'm pretty confident Ooh. was a direct, like an on-purpose line because it felt exactly like that, and it clicked immediately. And I actually just went back and rewatched it, um, which I, by the way, I continue to forget that all the Star Wars movies you can just stream them now. I, I remind right. myself every day, every time I edit these things, I'm like, oh yeah, I can go back and watch. Uh, so those right. are my two. I think I, I don't know if the first one was, but if it, if it was, it was cool. If not, it still kind of reminded me of that. But the the here he comes felt exactly like the here they come uh, from from a new hope. So I, I, I like that if that was on purpose. Which I, I when it comes to Filoni and Favreau, it always feels like it is. It feels like it is on purpose. I, yeah, I yeah. agree. Uh, the, the Filoni episode alone, his second episode, I should say, the Tatooine one, I felt like there were a lot of just on the nose mm-hmm. A New Hope quotes. So you may be right there. Um, all right, James, do you have an Easter egg reference? What do you got? Um, let's go with, uh, well, let's just get the way it starts off, right? Those two guys uh, jabbering back and forth um so you know it was pointed out in our our chat as well but i thought the same thing kind of reminded me of the classic tag and bink or those characters is that their names yeah 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 yep um there's something just something about the like uh this is what the imperials sit around and, and talk about and it's nonsense and it's funny um and i th- always right. feel like it was kind of intentional and actually i was thinking about it on my second watch that I think that might be the longest live action comedy routine like in Star Wars. <laughs> probably. <laughs> it's probably the case. And you know what it reminded me of actually too? Uh was it reminded me of College Humor had a thing called Troopers, where it was like kind of yes. a knockoff Stormtroopers. It reminded me of that. It reminded me of that very popular fan made uh cops spin off, like the Stormtroopers yeah. Cops thing. It kinda <laughs> had that it had a very fan made feel to it, and I thought mm-hmm. that like that's why I liked it so much. It just, which I guess everything that isn't. Someone said this recently. I forget where it was. Everything that isn't made by George is fan fiction. Like that's just how uh, that works. But like this, this, this does feel very fan made. And I'm like, you know what? That's that's cool. Like that's that's why I like this show. It has a right. different charm to it. Yeah. Did you and guys one of them, catch the actors? Well, I knew Jason Sudeikis mm-hmm. right away. Yeah, Adam Pally is the other one who. Um, doesn't have a whole big career, but, uh, but he, someone might know him from Iron Man three. He plays like the cameraman that oh, okay. is like, has the Tony Stark tattoo and like models his face after him. I don't uh-huh. know. Yeah. If, if anybody remembers that scene, it's that guy. I saw him in like, like, you know, you randomly catch like an indie comedy. I saw him in this movie called like night owls, mm. which <laughs> it's just, it's a pointless comedy, but I recognized him from there after I looked him up. But which anyway. is sort of a reference to this episode too. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, I did that on purpose. Um, no, I didn't. Uh, Lacey, what do you have for Easter eggs? Really quick, the biker scouts reminded me of the show Red vs. Blue with Master Chief and <laughs> yep. Halo and stuff. That's what I thought of as soon as it happened. I was like, this is exactly like three seasons of Red vs. Blue. Um, mm-hmm. I think the coolest thing to me personally was the Cara Dune being from Alderaan. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which would explain oh, yeah. why she joined the cause. She got a tattoo on her face. like Right. They destroyed her yeah. planet. And then it obviously ties her to Leia because Leia's from Alderaan. Mm-hmm. But. 
Yeah, that was which fine. means she's off world when she finds out that Alderaan right. was blown up. Obviously, probably already in the mix fighting because she's probably in her twenties. You know, she's not it's like, like a, kid. a revenge plot. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, because that's why it's funny you say that because last episode. When she's like, no, I'm not, I'm, you're not bringing me back. And he's like, they're Imperial. She's like, I'm in. I'm like, that was yeah. too quick. Too quick. Yeah. Now you know why. Yeah. But now, yeah, now you know why. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It makes complete sense now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, I have a few. One, I mean, I'll just point out the troopers trying to do their target practice before they take <laughs> off. They just, they're, <laughs> yeah. both, they're, they're both missing the soda can, like with the mm-hmm. BB guns. And they're, they're like, he's like shaking his. It blaster. has a spray like, paint. Like an empty yeah, spray right. he's like, why, why isn't it effect? working? Um, now, one I'll bring up that James, I don't know if you were going to bring this up, but if you are, then I'm stealing it from you. When uh, Baby Yoda, aka Tiny, as we call him here, uh, was holding back the fire, I got those Kanan vibes from the end of Rebels. Um, when he's like kind of keeping the blast away from the crew, uh, so that's the first thing I thought of there. Did you make that connection at all? No, I yeah, because that's one of my down points of the episode. Oh well, we'll I really get to that did later. Not like that, you know. <laughs> okay, all right, no problem. Um, Jeff, do you have any others? Uh, I I mean, just just even just the little things. Uh, seeing the, the E Web was pretty cool. Uh, it's such a yeah. video game thing. Granted, we saw it in Empire Strikes Back. They were going to try to shoot the Falcon with it. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't. And actually, I I asked this when we recorded our show. I don't remember if they even got a shot off with it. Um, but they tried to set it up and take down the Falcon. Uh, and then I like the back to medicine. I thought that was a pretty cool, very, very quick, brief, doesn't stop you in your tracks reference. Um, just, right. you know, that's what they what uh, IG-11 sprays the back of Mando's head with the back to, uh, which obviously we've we've heard of plenty and seen. I mean, the most prominent thing is, is diaper yeah. Luke. Uh, from Empire Strikes Back. So I thought that was, I, I, I right. thought that was, uh, again, and, and I, uh, this has been part of my, my, I guess my big, like, speeches about this show is why I like it is Star Wars has, has these issues uh, in most of their movies, especially recently, and I, I like the sequel trilogy, and I like the, the one-offs, but uh, of the being too on the nose with references, uh, and Rogue One, probably the biggest defender of that. Um, I agree. Just everything stopped in your track. Like, hey, remember these guys? It's Star Wars, <laughs> and the 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 back to is a good example of like very little, very small, tiny thing uh, thrown in that that if you get it, you get it. If you don't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't stop you from enjoying what's happening. Uh, mm-hmm. And so that's uh, they've just done such a good job at weaving that in. And I, I honestly can't think of one reference this entire series. And maybe I'm you know I guess it's it's subjective that literally had me just go what or like. Okay, like fourth wall breaking, like Deadpool type stuff, where it's basically explaining to you what this reference is. Uh, so okay. it, it, those little things, I, I just I really enjoy. Nice, uh, James. What else you got? Um, I I don't know how many people caught this because I had to go back a couple times to be like, is that really what he said? Uh, but as IG Eleven is on the speeder coming into town, they cut to a close up of the storm, the scout troopers right outside, and one of them goes, "Yeah, the T16s are faster." Oh, did he? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. They always sneak that in, because apparently there's one in The Rise of Skywalker, too, on Kajimi that I missed. Mm. When they talk about, like, the T-18 or T-17 or whatever. All right. And then, like, immediately after that, like, mumbled line, they go, what's that? What the, You know, here he comes or something. Oh, so okay. it's real fast, but I was like, I think he just said that, and I went back and listened, like, three times, and I got the line, but... Nice. Yeah, it's in there. All right. I have to go back and check. I, I've only watched it once. So I got to go back and check these out. Um, Lacey, uh, you have any others? Well, they made a lot of references to. They finally talked about Jedi and mm-hmm. the Force, yep. which I, I have a lot of questions on why no one knows what the Force is. It's only been like, what? Five years. Couple, five years. And no one knows about Jedi or anything. Like, Luke Skywalker's mm-hmm. still around. Mm. It's like weird. Um, and then, like, the Clone War stuff. Night of a Thousand Tears, stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Some um, of that is new and some of that is references to old stuff. And it's hard to right. figure out what they're referring to. You know, it seems like they're Was like, that the first Siege of Mandalore <laughs> direct reference that we get? I forget because I do know. I think so. Yeah, because I was initially, and I don't know about you guys, I was initially, when they first said the Purge, I just assumed that was the Siege of Mandalore. And it's it's definitely, definitely not. Because the purge I, happened while Mando, while Dinjarin was a Mandalorian, whereas uh, Siege of Mandalorian obviously happened 
a long time ago. Clone Wars era. Mm-hmm. So that was, yeah, I thought so. That was the first like direct, direct reference, which I would imagine we're going to get a lot of flashbacks to that uh, come come next season. When yeah. you say when you say direct reference, do you mean in this show only? Yes. Yes. Cuz yes, like, I'm pretty sure they talk about it in Rebels. Yeah, no, definitely just yeah, cuz Rebels in in Clone Wars for sure, but in this show I felt like that was the first time we heard them literally say the word Siege of Mandalore, which is going to be the plot for the Clone Wars season yeah. coming up next mm-hmm. in the spring, so. Right. It was almost like, yeah, advertisement. It's it's a setup for, yeah, because yeah. w- we're talking about it right now. <laughs> right, yep. yeah. Um, okay, now, uh, is it my turn? Yeah. yeah, right? I would yeah. just talk about the big one. Just I'm gonna talk, avoiding I, it. Well, this is the big one to me, because a dark saber, dark schmaber, I don't really care. <laughs> um, Mando isn't a race, it's a creed, which means Boba Fett is a Mandalorian again. No. In canon. No. Yep. Confirmed. I F- I don't that, I don't I, go that far. That's a leap. I I think you've made a leap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> yeah. No, but we, I I like that they that said it it's not a race. race. Huh? We've known it was not a race. I know, but the whole the whole idea behind it is that you can't be a Mandalorian unless you are from Mandalore or part of Mandalorian lineage. And that's what kind of scrapped the whole thing that Boba Fett was a Mandalorian. Because before this whole, the animated series and stuff, everyone just assumed that's what he was. And then they kind of just said, no, it's affiliated with this planet. And that's that's where I saw the separation. So now if they're saying, you don't have to be from Mandalore or tied to someone from Mandalore, you can be a Mandalorian again because it's a creed and you could just sign up and be, you know, voted in. Then to me, you can be anything and be a Mandalorian. So that's how I saw it. Oh, anyway, makes sense. yeah, I, 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 it, it I, does make sense. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's that's tough though. I the, that I will say the definition of it. I mean, I think we will get Boba the. I mean, obviously, elephant not in the room. Boba Fett. They never addressed the character at the end of the fifth episode. But I, I was one of very few people I, I believe who didn't think it was Boba Fett when that character was teased. I just like, there's no way. I didn't think it was either. But now the fact that I. But now that they today this episode convinced me that it is because we heard John Favreau mm. say he wasn't in Mandalorian, and at that point they had done one, like they filmed one season, they're they're they finishing it up. Now that like, and I've heard enough of that audio analyzed and like the sounds and all that, where I've I've been slowly convinced because I was firm like that is not Boba Fett, and I th- I thought it was initially Moff Gideon, which obviously it isn't Moff Gideon. Um, so I'm I'm kind of convinced that that it is now. Now that we never got the answer, uh, I'm kind of convinced that 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 oh, will be. Oh, with Boba. um, Fennec Shand, you mean? Yeah, at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I forgot that they just completely skipped over who that was. Holy cow! Yeah. Yeah. I I, I do think I could see them going back to Tatooine, and that's just where they answer that. So I I do and think that that will like your your comment on that. Like I don't know, right or wrong. I think it will be defined now with Boba. I think they're gonna pretty they're gonna clear that up uh, at some point. Right. They're, I think fans that, fans have been wanting it, but yeah. Go ahead, James. I, I, all I was going to say is that it's the perfect time to mention that, too. That's another reason why another notch down on my score for the episode is I felt like there were a couple things that I expected to get answers to, and they just, like, never addressed it. And I'm like, so is this set up for, like, season two, season three or something, you know? Like, are we going to watch all of season two thinking we're going to get an answer to that, and they just still don't address it? You know, it's like it didn't feel like – it wrapped up everything as I expected it to. So I was like, oh, uh, you know, and then maybe that's, that's fair. I mean, in my own head a little bit, but, um, but yeah, that was one of the things. So that's fair. I mean, it could also be Favre just being like, let me just sprinkle this out here. And it's something I can revisit as a big mm-hmm. thing. I've already set up um, season two, which I've heard. I don't know if this is public or not. I've heard that they're, or we were told, I think that it's halfway through filming season two already. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, They'll probably be finishing up in like March or so and getting uh, post production done. But um, all right, so uh, Lacey, you kind of alluded to it. The dark saber has obviously a big Easter egg for um, Star Wars animated fans and stuff. So like we can just touch yeah. on that briefly, I guess, as the cliffhanger end of the episode. I've been actually waiting for James to say something because I feel like when this showed up in the show, I was like, "Oh, James must be going nuts right now." And then I agree. Here, yeah. and he was like, "I hated it," and I was like, "Oh, oh." <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and 
Uh, he used so, it as a can opener. What the heck, man? Yeah. It's so like if Ben I, Solo showed up and I was like, I hated it. I'm yeah, really torn right. on the scene because I really like that he has it and it opens up so many more questions about like, why doesn't Bo-Katan have it? Mm-hmm. But I'm also kind of torn because I really thought she was going to be in the episode. Well, because of she yeah. wasn't. Right. And so I'm like, are they going to do that? And they didn't do it. And then I'm like, oh, there's kind of a reference to it, but it's not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. So again, this is that like Last Jedi thing. Like I wrote a little thing in my head and then when it didn't come true, but I have to step back and go, but I still like that we got a live action dark saber. It's a new owner. So there's a big story there. You know, it still sets up defeating Moff Gideon at some point and giving it back to the rightful owners or whatever, you know, or maybe right. Mandalorian takes it, which is still awesome. So there's a lot that goes into that, but <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's great. Live action Darksaber, who can complain, you know? Yeah. That's Jeff, awesome. were you, are you, are you a huge fan of uh, animated and did you mark out when you saw that thing Buster the TIE Fighter? I, I was very excited. I was also shocked. It's not something I ever thought would look good in live action. It's such a goofy it thing. It does. Even it, it, it looks it looks great though. I was like I was stunned. I I honestly didn't think we were gonna see it because of that. Like I I could just have seen them testing it and being like this is a this is a show breaker. Like people are gonna look at this and be like this stinks because if you introduce it, it has to be a big thing. Like there's just no there's no two ways about it. So I I was stunned the second that thing popped through that tie footer. I was I was pretty shocked. Which I don't think I've had that moment with this show. Baby Yoda was obviously a pretty big reveal, but there's, there's, I mean, I don't know. There's no precedent for that. Seeing that thing as like a fan, I, I was, I was pretty blown away. I thought, I thought it was very cool. And also, there's definitely a tie-in. This is not my original thought. This was a thought that was had on. I think this was a thought via someone on our show. We talked about it earlier that they think because Moff Gideon explains that Baby Yoda means a lot to him and he's wielding the dark saber, that there is some sort of Sith something connection there uh, and there is an interest of, of Baby Yoda's powers and him having the dark saber. So it does set up a lot there. Now it obviously opens up the door of, of Jedi and Sith, which I, I am sick mm-hmm. of. Uh, but I think so <laughs> long as they... If if this is what we get with it, the dark saber, that's cool. I'm fine with that. You know, now if we just start introducing mm-hmm. a bunch of Jedi and Sith, like whatever, and that doesn't count for flashback. I'm fine with flashback. Like that's just mm-hmm. like that makes sense. But that'd be my only pause. Like that's not a negative for me. But my only pause, is like all right, I don't want too, I don't want too many Sith and Jedi. I'm a, I'm a little sick and tired of them at this point. Um, and that's sure. kind of why I like the, Mandalorian. The cool thing I think about the dark saber is clearly, clearly rooted in some Jedi history, right? But but every time it's talked about in Clone Wars and Rebels, it almost has nothing to do with the Jedi. It has more to do with whoever owns this rightfully rules Mandalore and stuff. So it's like you our, our character is going to see that lightsaber in season 2. And almost in my opinion, it might even lead into like he feels like now that guy rules him. Mm. Yeah, I could, Moff Gideon yeah. wields the dark saber. I mean, it's a, it's a big setup for what could happen in season two. So I, I'm interested, and it doesn't have anything to do with the Force. Well, it also sets up obviously Mando having it as well and, and ruling the new Mandalore, yeah. which I guess we're gonna also we we I, we don't know, and that's for obvious reasons how mm-hmm. decimated Mandalore is, or just like. Mandalorians in general, obviously, <laughs> most of them yeah. of our are either dead or gone, uh, right. except for the armor. Who that. I'm convinced the armor is someone. I don't know who the armor is. Someone we know. I, I, I either whether it's Sabine. I don't know. I just it just seems so obvious of how ambiguous they're making the armor that it just makes sense that it's someone that we've met before. Mm-hmm. Even if it is Bo-Katan, I don't know. It could be her as well. Um, yeah, but yeah you, you are you are right on that. Yeah, it's the, all these like accessories. Like it brings me back to like being a kid when you have the the action figures and it comes with this and it comes with that or like a video game journey where you have to get the armor and then you have to get this like mando's got the body armor in this season he got his jetpack and now he's gonna be setting his eyes on that saber like he's gonna collect (laughs) everything that he needs to be like the ultimate mandalorian um so i find that to be interesting but 
I mean, not too many others in terms of Easter eggs. Uh, Grief Karga uh, said Scum and Villainy. I caught that. Uh, oh, which made me right, think of yeah. uh, Mos Eisley. Um, and then the great kind of reminded me of the garbage shoot when they had to bust it open to, to slide down. But anyone else have any others that maybe the listeners would like to uh, catch? Um, um, they, they talked about the, the mind flares a bit. I've seen people speculate that that could be that the big stupid octopus from, from I Rogue hate One. that thing. Borg gullet. <laughs> Borg bull gu- yeah. Oh, God. I've seen people speculate that stupid that's what that Borg is. Stupid Borg I hate it so much. Borg that Gullet wasn't even an Easter egg that stopped in, the movie uh, in Rise of uh, Skywalker, too. I think some something about the uh, visual dictionary says something about Borg Gullet and being connected to the Wayfinder somehow. I oh can't. I, yeah. I, I, I don't have the visual dictionary, but uh, but yeah. I looked up Mind Flayer, and all I got was Dungeons and Dragons stuff. So yes. I, like, I don't know. Stranger Things. Yes, well, that's and that's it, the yeah. other thing I got. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I also the Incinerator Stormtrooper was very cool. Uh, that was yeah. super video sure, gamey. Sure, sure. And that that's where you you mostly see that character, so it was neat to see that. And the, my only other thing, well, everything else is like obvious <laughs> stuff that I had written down, like Jawas and um, just just yeah. them referencing ISB officers and all that. But yes. uh, there there were like little like I don't I don't think they were Womp Rats though. Granted, I always thought Jawas were native to Tatooine, and I know Womp Rats are native to Tatooine. But we've seen Jawas all over. But there were like little squirrels or rats or uh, something in the lava, lava otters. otters. Yeah. Yeah. I call them the, lava otters. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you know, you I thought. Sure. I thought. Yeah, it's funny because I thought because uh, they flashed a Cara Dune looking at those things, and I thought she was going to say something like "uh, womp rats," just to tell yeah. us that they were romp, womp rats. But they didn't, and I was glad they didn't. So I was just like, whatever that is, whatever that is. <laughs> um, we're also yeah. kind of looking over one other one too. Um, he, when he was saved, he was saved by those Mandalorians, and they're clear. They clearly have the Death Watch symbol. Oh yeah, they're yeah very much Death Watch. Yeah, he was very much Death him. Watch. Um, so which is clearly connected to Previsla, connected to Bo-Katan again, like with the Night Owls. Well, Bill Burr and them referenced stuff. how bad he was, right? Like they referenced that he was a pretty bad dude at one point, mm-hmm. and so it makes sense that he was he was brought up. Uh, through Death Watch, um, which I didn't put it together when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh, like that is Death Watch. Like that is who saves him." Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I don't, I don't remember anyone predicting that. By the way, I thought Obi Wan or someone was going to save him. I just thought it made sense that <laughs> a lot of like people were saying Yoda would or whatever. Yeah. So, I, but yeah. now that now that we see it's Death Watch and Mandalorian, you're like, "Oh yeah, no, duh. Like that was it." Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Also, I'm I'm very firm team. It's Life Day when that happens. That they're so oh, yeah. with the robes. They're, yeah, oh, yeah, they're yeah, in their yeah. red robes. I'm like convinced that's life day. I mean, Favreau's doing everything he can to reference that without pissing people off. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. he's, doing, he's doing an all right job. Um, and then just, I guess we'll get into it more when we talk uh, full uh, discussion on the episode. So um, we have Jason Polensky at Forrest JWP who said, uh, What a thrilling conclusion for a fun series. I never thought I would see what I saw a.k.a. the Darksaber, at the end in live action. Uh, good job not spoiling it on Twitter, by the way, though, Jason. Um, he said, 9.5 out of 10 Pedros. Thank the maker, Mando Fando. So thank you for that, Jason. People um, were spoiling it, like, literally two hours after it came out. I oh, like, va- Vanity Fair, ridiculous. not to throw them under the bus, but they put out an article, like, IGN early too. this morning, saying, like, the that saber at the end. People were like, holy cow. Yeah. Crazy. It's, it's but, ridiculous. Because what other saber are they going to talk about in this type of show? You know, it's not going to be like you know Luke Skywalker's green lightsaber. But anyway. I don't get um, it. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll get to the discussion in a second. But first, I know a lot of people are waiting for this. The Mando Code. Uh, it's time for the final number. So each week I revealed one number of six that will help you find your way to enter to win the bounty, which is a Black Series Boba Fett premium electronic helmet, which I didn't know is not going to be available until like March. But... <laughs> Either way, you'll you're going to win and then. get it. Yeah. yeah, you'll get it then. Um, but I hope you've paid attention and uh, remembered all these numbers because your mission concludes right now. The final number is one. So that is the last number of the six. The numbers were not given in the correct order. So you must take all six numbers, put them in the right order, and email them to us at resistancebroadcast at gmail.com. Email us by noon tomorrow, a.k.a. Saturday, and we'll randomly draw a winner from those that sent in the code in the correct order order and the winner will be announced on our season one recap show 
whenever that is, whether that's next week or in two weeks, but we'll announce it then. And Do you have you know a clue what? of what the order is? No. And you know why I don't have a clue? Because two people already said, I already figured it out. I'm, gonna <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, you know what? No one's getting a clue then because you, they're way too smart. So you're not getting a clue. Okay. That's it. And we're no not clues. rushing to get to announce the winner because this thing's not going to be available to March for whatever reason, even though it's probably on a shelf somewhere. Forget about it. All right. <laughs> Let's get into the oh spoiler God. breakdown <laughs> of the... Good luck to everyone, everybody, by the way. Make sure you submit those answers by noon tomorrow. <laughs> All right. Spoiler breakdown of the episode. First, let's warm up the engines by a quick shot, which is our favorite shot of the episode. Each of us, um, I'm sure some people are going to say the Dark Saber, but um, uh, I'll start with Jeff. What was your favorite shot or moment in this episode? Um, I mean, it, it, it was that, that last shot. I think I was... Like one of the best shots so far of the series. It was cool, but um, I for, now, that's tough. The, it's so good that I honestly can't. Uh, the, the actually, I will say IG Eleven flying in on the speeder bike was pretty cool. That was that was I guess more of a clip than a shot. I'm thinking like mm-hmm. like one sure. shot for him, but yeah, he, having him fly in from the distance and go into town was 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 pretty damn cool. I will say that because yeah. even think if you would have told me beforehand, IG11 would have driven a speeder bike, I probably assume that looked pretty dumb. <laughs> right, um, That's but true. It, it, yeah. it pulled it off very well. It looked it looked pretty cool. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, okay, Lacey, favorite shot. My favorite shot was um, the flame trooper that is coming into the scene with the smoke and the sun sunset behind him and the rack focus. It is hands down one of the prettiest shots of the whole season. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It is amazing. And they used yeah. it in the trailer. And I was like, I know why you use this because it's such a beautiful shot. <laughs> right. Now, is that so? All, is it all flame? Because I'm so bad with trooper armor. Is all flame troopers have the red? Is the that red their, stripe. Yeah. That's their he deal? He is an incinerator stormtrooper, which is a first appearance of that kind. Okay. Not a flame trooper, Which I don't know yeah. really what yeah. distinguishes. Just, they've been calling it both two, things, so I'm yeah. going to stay with what I said. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I thought you you said, what did you say, Lacey? I said flame trooper because that's what they've oh, been calling did. it. Yeah. Who, oh, who called it? Like multiple My- people have been calling it that. Oh. My my Google of it for images when I searched flame trooper I only got first order flame troopers. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And Whatever. Where, it's the seems, guy with the flames. No, that's yeah, we storm all know. Trooper. We all know. Yeah. <laughs> the I, fire it seems, guy. It seems crazy not the just to call them all the same thing. But. With yeah. the fire. The guy who burns. He looks everything. like a clone trooper almost. More yeah. importantly, yeah. that rack focus though. Yeah, it was good. Perfect. Yeah. It was well done. All right, James. Um, flame trooper. <laughs> Burn trooper, incinerator, burn Whatever guy trooper. aside. What's your favorite <laughs> shot? Um, I mean, it's that dark saber one, but I'll pull a different one. I'm gonna go with another shot of Moff Gideon, which is um, there's a specific scene where he is just like laying down the law, and they do this like really long push, and they they do the pull focus so that the background moves opposite him. Um, it's kind of a uh, realization type uh trick that they Mm -hmm. do with the camera but in this particular case i really liked it and i thought it worked well and it really sunk in the gravity of how like thought out uh this character is like every word that he says is like knows the whole scenario so um i i think that that worked so i I really like that shot yeah, I dig that. I mean, he seems like a very established villain in, um, like we've been saying on our on the Resistance broadcast, Star Wars has a bit of a villain problem because um, either they bring in new villains and kill them off immediately, or they go back to or old he's a clone that work, or they're a clone. Yeah, and we we said Star Wars had a villain problem before they brought back Palpatine. Then they're like, wow, we got to bring back Palpatine now as our big bad villain. But I like this guy, and I believe him as a villain. I think he yeah. has conviction, and he's like, no, I'm gonna like kill you. Like, and I like that be... he's ISB because they consider yeah. even the Im- Empire considers ISB to be like the worst of the worst because those guys like did messed up stuff to get the yeah. information that they needed to. I Googled those guys today and tried to look up um, some canon stuff on that. Yeah. Um, all right. My favorite shot aside from because I keep doing Baby Yoda stuff. Baby Yoda having fun while being on the speeder bike. What? I thought that oh, was cool. Oh, so yeah. good. Yeah, with the ears. I knew John was going to go for it. But... 
I'm going to change my tune and say when uh, the shot is of your, as though you're in that boat on the lava river behind IG-11 and he's marching, he's walking towards the opening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just liked the colors. I liked everything about that shot in that sequence. They Because they had a, an <coughs> HD um, a screenshot of that on like the official site as like one of the promo images for it. And I just thought it was such, it would be such a cool like wallpaper and such a good shot. So I think that'd be mine there. Um, and so that just, let's just have a chat about the episode overall. We're ending season one, uh, overall thoughts Did it meet your expectations on closing it out. I know Jeff, you said it was one of your top. So why don't you start us off with your overall thoughts on this episode and how it sat in the, in the season. I think it does a good job at, at fixing a problem that star Wars has, uh, and that is killing people. Uh, we saw that last week. People really do enjoy um, Quill. They liked uh, Nick Nolte. He died very quickly mm-hmm. and yeah. unexpectedly. Uh, same with IG-11. You kill him off. Uh, it, it, it's a stakes thing, and we hear stakes a lot. Not as much with Star Wars, but that's more of like a Marvel thing. Uh, stakes with franchises and, you know, we need to see people die. I mean, I just I will forever think about that Star Wars documentary. You can hear Lawrence Kasdan, um, Gary Kurtz talk about killing off Han Solo right. and how killing off Han Solo in Return of the Jedi would have really set at the stage of like, man, anyone can die. I mean, Harrison Ford thought he, you know, what well, we know now, he thought he should have died. He wanted to die in Force Awakens too. Uh, so right. Basically, the only reason he came back. Um, right. And and so I think setting that up where we're going to meet a bunch of characters and we're not going to know if they're going to die. And I think any assumption you have throughout an episode should be thrown out the window because even like the the Bill Burr clan, we thought they were dead. They weren't. They're still alive. Uh, right. So this this show avoids that problem. Speaking of just Star Wars problems. Uh, mm-hmm. And it, it's a small little thing to pull from this episode because I do like the overall moving of the story. I have enjoyed this series. It has a very uh, action-adventure type vibe to it where it's a lot of plot in the beginning and the plot kind of fizzles. Not doesn't fizzle out, but it kind of takes a bit of a back burner. Uh, it still is advancing. You know, It's still Mandalorian on the run with Baby Yoda and you meet all these characters, but it, it, it harkens back to the Buck Rogers um, and Flash Gordon type stuff that George built the – the franchise off of mm-hmm. uh, and I like that for a couple episodes uh, that's the type of vibe I want and then we come back to the main plot to round it out um, so I, I really I, I was as pleased as I probably could have been with with this maybe if they would have I guess I don't even want to knock it but if I guess they would have answered that who is the mysterious figure at the end of the fifth episode probably would have maybe been a little happier but that that's pretty hard to do at this point because I, I was pleased with where this went um, and they I mean I don't know. I feel like at the end of the last episode, you're like, how the hell are they going to get out of this? Like, what's who, right. how do they break out? And, and so you have that intrigue and you have that suspense and it sets up an episode where you really don't know what's going to happen. And I, I, I didn't think he was going to die, but even when he's sitting there and he's like, you can't take my helmet off. I'm like, well, what the heck? Like, I, it wasn't predictable right. for me. I'm like, what? I, go, I, I Maybe he's going to take his helmet off. Maybe he's, I don't know. And, it, it had me on the edge of my seat, which is, again, big because... I, I enjoyed the Rise of Skywalker. I have issues with it, but the thing, thing with that was like that felt predictable in a lot of spots, and I wasn't as on the edge of my seat as I wish I would have been. Where this one, like again, the whole episode, I was like, "Damn!" Like I don't know what's going to happen next. Sure, and, and to your point, like I didn't expect to see Pedro Pascal's face. Um, I mean, going into the series, I'm like, they have to because you have to humanize this character. There's no way they're going to keep this thing on the guy's yeah. the main character's head. And then you hear stories like he wasn't on set, he wasn't even in the suit. Blah blah blah, and then I, you know, I heard a rumor like, oh, he, they may have shot something recently to, to toss it into the season finale. So I'm like, oh, maybe he is gonna pop his helmet off, and boom, there it was. So now you're gonna have a lot of fans thinking like, maybe he was. You know, people who aren't like in like we are are gonna think he was in the suit the whole time, and and John Wayne's grandson's gonna get mad because he's not gonna get the credit for it by fans and all that. But um, I was glad to see his face because again, it does kind of like add that layer like that. Oh, okay. There's the guy. Like it's mm-hmm. Din Djarin. We have the name, which Pedro Pascal released, uh, leaked in an interview. Or well, not leaked, but he just said it a few months ago, and no one really cared. Um, but he's becoming more of a person, even though they still call him Mando. And I kind of like that aspect of this episode. Um, James I liked Lacey, that he showed his face to a droid. Yeah, yeah, he's like, I'm not living, so you can show me. He's like, Well, you got me there. I See, think it was more I than that, like though. That. I still, oh, I did like it because the whole series he's been saying, I hate droids, I hate droids, I hate droids. So f- to be the one thing that you show your face to that you're vulnerable in That's front of point. is the droid. Yeah. Because then he cared uh-huh. about him later, too. Yeah. 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 He's like, you can't, yeah. He, it was like a Terminator 2 moment. He's like, you can't yeah. go. 
And he steps in the lava? Holy cow, that's like a T2 moment. Good, that's a good yeah. point. I mean, he wouldn't I even board a ship. I said in the episode. <laughs> he wouldn't even I know, board I a ship with the droid about, in the like, first episode. Yeah. <laughs> they offered that one that one cruiser with the R2 unit, and he said no. He wouldn't even get no on droids, the thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah right. so it's, it, it has been a... I, see, the, 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 the face thing was never a problem for me, and like I, I totally get if it was, but I thought the physical... Even just the way he would look at Yoda, the way he would react, give him the toys, it, it was enough for me. We're like, I, I didn't ever need to see his face. You could just tell by the emotion, the way he talked, and the way he interacted with things and people, it was progressing enough. Which, again, I totally get sure. if that's a problem for people. Like, I, I get that. But for me, it was never like, I got to see his face. It was like, now that I've seen it, it doesn't change anything for me. Like, I, obviously, sure, it's nice to see sure. that he's human. <laughs> But maybe it, right. maybe it helps that I know what Pedro Pascal looks like. <laughs> but yeah. Right. Yeah. Like right. It, 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 it's a nice moment, but like I was already like I already liked the progression of the character. Like I was already connecting Some, with him. Somebody asked me like mid season, they were like, I wonder if we're ever gonna figure out what that guy looks like and I was like, Well, I mean we know who plays him and they're like, Who? And I'm like, Pedro Pascal and they're like, I don't know who that is and I'm like, Okay. <laughs> so maybe like in just a certain group of people we don't we we see through the mask, you know. James, was this was this over the internet? Someone asked you. No. Oh, I was gonna say you should have like googled a picture of like carrot top and sent it to them. And be like, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. That's Mando. <laughs> no, uh, I, I, the only reason I thought that was weird was because I was thinking there would be some sort of like, oh, our clan now can take our helmets off, maybe or something along those lines. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of an awkward delivery, I thought, because he says no living thing has ever, and he knows he's talking to a non-living thing. The thing's trying to take his helmet off, and his point is that no living thing has ever seen it. And so the droid well, comes back and goes, I'm not a living thing. And he goes, "What if? oh, yeah, good point. What if, like, to get to get I all deep here, he started seeing droids as sentient and living things, showing his change in how he views them? I'll take it. I like that. I like and that I like what Lacey was saying, too. I think it was yeah. just clever writing that... You got to have a little bit of understanding that the guy's dying. So he's like, oh, living thing. And the guy's like, I'm not living. And he's like, okay. Right. Like, yeah, I don't think it has to be a bigger thing. I don't know. Favreau <laughs> explaining to the audience what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I still think, and I know this is like a nitpick, I guess. And that's like a hot topic word right now. But I still think Carl Weathers has a hard time delivering Star Wars dialogue. <laughs> what do you mean? Mando, what are you doing with that you know, container thing? Interesting. So we, we have a completely different take We have take to go. We, we, we think he's great with it. We think he, oh, okay. really? he cornballs it up so much that like, oh, okay. it, just, it, it just works for his character. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That That's just our view. I get it, though. I mean, it's delivering Star Wars lines is not easy. I was not bothered by the Tatooine episode, but a lot of people were. Sure. So, uh, it's just funny. I think when I think of him, it's not so much like you know people always allude to Chubbs and Happy Gilmore, but it's Apollo Creed and the smooth Muhammad Ali sounding, quick talking, uh, no problem speaking whatsoever type of character, or even Predator Dylan. Like, and then you get him now, and he's just like, I am an action figure, man. No, oh, hey, <laughs> he's very similar to his character, minus like the very on the nose humor from Arrested Development, where he plays Ooh. himself. Mm. Yeah, he actually true. reminds yeah. me of um, the the non playable character in Jumanji. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. The, Still haven't seen don't? it. Oh, no. yes. I think Jeff knows. Yeah, he's just I like know. a driver. Oh, you do too. Okay. Yeah, he's just he like a driver, and he delivers. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> it is your job to go to the thing, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I still have to see that. <coughs> yeah, it's good. Um, it's also possible that, like, you know, he's in his 60s and it's probably not the easiest dialogue to remember. So maybe he's like, line. It's like, oh, yeah. Mando, go get the thing. But my biggest problem with the episode, I had one problem. My problem was that they actually punched a baby three times in this episode. That was messed up. I agree. <laughs> like, I get one time kind of pushing it a little bit. and stop. They straight up punched this thing three times. And I straight yeah. up was like, ha, ah! like every time they did it. Right. I don't understand bit, how they were able to do the last it. One was bit one of them. obviously the worst too. Yeah. yeah. And you hear it make noises when they punch it. John Favreau, what are you doing? I hate it. <laughs> Pulling at those heart strings. I hate Just, it. Yeah. I'm like uh, a and especially cuz like babies, puppies, kittens like ugh. Mhm. Anything baby. Yeah. 
Well, that, I have to... that took some risks doing that. Uh, that was the biggest risk John Favreau took this season was punching Baby Yoda several times. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, you don't do that. Um, that did make me a little uneasy. I, I knew he was gonna be fine because they're just troopers, and troopers never like win. But, but still, punch I agree. Baby. I, 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 I agree. I don't know why they had that in there. They didn't need you know, it. You know, when we had uh, Nick on, he pointed about. I think it was Nick that pointed out that trope about someone standing there the pointing of the gun and then getting shot from behind i was like they did yeah. it again in this episode oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, it's like Wait, they've done they... that same thing like six i times. said that with kara and the episode of kara dune uh at the village yeah oh right right wait when did they do it in this episode the battle droid oh like yeah. it's like standing there pointing the gun at him or whatever and yep then yeah boom gets hit from right. behind yeah they do yeah you're right yeah they do do that quite a bit a little too much almost where Again, you're like all right who's who's taking this person out it started with another Baby Yoda, scene the first episode yep. yeah it's just another scene in this particular episode that i was like oh come on guys now you wait know, a minute just James. Another, Spe- speaking gonna. of which what didn't you like about the fire scene with baby yoda oh yeah the, mu- yeah. the music oh wow yeah, so I it's, loved com- the music in it's this coming episode. in, and it was like, I felt like, uh, I, uh, you know that, you know that thing that's like that image of like the, they drop the kid, and it's like, why have you forsaken me, father? That's what it felt like the to me, the baby like raising his hands up, and then like, uh, and they're trying to play this emotional music, and I'm like. It's this little puppet thing, and and the editing was bad too. Like one scene, he's lifting his head up, and the next, it's already up, and and I don't know, just it what it, the music is supposed to be this emotional music is just not working at all. Like I laughable to me, yeah. Mm. He's I'm like I, I, really? I think the music has been though, so that's I think it's been the best part of probably the series. And I, and which is which is kind of crazy because I'm not they trying don't... to bash the music overall. Yeah, I'm just no, saying no, no, this no, particular yeah. scene pulled me out. Yeah. Well, but L- Ludwig goranson has been kind of insane uh, because he doesn't really pull on Star Wars themes at all, and that's very hard no. to do. That's very hard to make it Star Warsy without it being Star Wars. Um, and it, it's it, it's a vibe. If if you've seen Black Panther, if you've seen Creed, it's a very recognizable sound because they're very recent movies that he did. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's. It fits so well. I mean, the, the theme I, I hum it all the time. It's stuck in my head. Which I I, yeah. I, I, I say the same thing about the Ray's theme, but that's John Williams. So that's just not very shocking. But he made something right. that's catchy. But he he made a theme here that I just constantly have in my head. Um, I agree. It's it, 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 it's it's pretty nuts. That's it's one of the things that I think because of Baby and I and and love Baby Yoda, great character. Uh, I get get the memes off people, but. Uh, maybe Yoda's <laughs> overshadowed a couple things, and I think one of them is the music. I think that's a pretty damn impressive job. Because Rogue One, for me, Rogue One obviously pulled a lot of, of of John Williams stuff, but even some of the stuff like when the Hammerhead Corvette hits the hits the uh, Star Destroyers, like I like that scene. But it, it, I, I always felt like the music just wasn't. It was good, but not great. Star Wars, where this. This show in general, uh, even if you don't like a couple parts, like I, like James, I think you you still agree. Like the yeah. music has hammered home for the most part some emotion and action where it's just like that's, that's to not to be not John Williams and <laughs> to do that with Star Wars is pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I mean, I at first I was jarred by it because you see the first shot of the series and there's the Mandalorian and you're expecting that classical orchestral sound. And you start getting these weird like techno vibes and stuff, and yeah, and I hear the I hear it a lot in the first episode, and then as the season went on, I stopped hearing the music, which meant that it was blending in. I agree with um, that. Yeah, it, it took me a while. And Lacey, you were the same, right? It took you a little while to get on board with no, it. No, right? I loved it from the first episode to now. Oh, did you? Yes. Yeah, I, I was she, on board the whole time. She was even. I did a um, a trailer reaction with her, and she was like, "The music." Mm. In this episode, the first thing I wrote was the music, quote, <laughs> checkpoint is amazing and the baby is amazing. The first mm-hmm. like 10 seconds of this episode, the music kicks in and you're like, hells yeah. Like, it's so good. <laughs> it, it, um, it's so good. Hells yeah. Hells I think it, yeah. Because like, I obviously love it. I just ranted about it. But I, I would agree with you, though, John, on the fact that 
I, at first in the first episode, I was was skeptical of it. But I, mm-hmm. I think that's a massive. Let's get back to Star Wars problems. That's a massive problem of of being way too tied down and used to the, the same old thing. Sure. And John once Williams, you break yeah. the mold, and you're like, that's right. This this stuff gets better when it's new and different, and and pulling on things that we know, but creating things that we haven't seen before. And that's the thing with the mm-hmm. music. You're like, you know what? No, it fits. It works. But you're just you're just so not used to. It. You're like, what? Where's where's the theme? Where's the thing I know and I think I like? Um, and once you're able to, 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 I guess, break away from that, you're like, oh, new Star Wars is kind of cool if they can do different things. Sure. Yeah. Speaking yeah, of new Star Wars, the R2 droid with legs was weird for me. Oh, that was, that was, that was so the creepy. Weird jarring thing for me. Yeah, that, that was bizarre. I was like, this is all cool, 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 whatever. And then it stands up and I was like, oh, we're doing gondolas now? Okay. All right. <laughs> and it's like whistling as it's pushing them down this lava river. Uh, do you, it was do you know what's odd to me about that scene? Because I, I don't mind the droids so much because I go, okay, somebody repurposed an R2 unit to be able to do sure. this. That There's sure. probably a DIY droid, not like an official <laughs> gondola model. Right. But <laughs> right. Um, what I didn't like about that scene is like they're moving forward and they're like, droid, stop moving forward. And then she's like, I said stop. Then she goes over and without even like any hesitation blows the thing's head off and then they go we're still moving forward i'm like that was the best s- story you could come up with for the this whole scenario it seems really weird that she like all of a sudden flips on the droid blows him up and you're still moving for i don't know it just seemed weird right why not just say droid stop yeah. moving forward or i don't know or stop i don't know something it just seemed odd yeah. Maybe I'm being over complaining, but I was like, why is she blowing its head off now? Complainy Baney? <laughs> yeah, she maybe. high stress. Yeah, Think about me in that situation. I'd blow that thing up in a second. Yeah. yeah. And why was uh, why wouldn't the droid sure. respond? You know, what was wrong with the droid? I don't know. Yeah. I it took too know. long. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So. I want yeah, I mean, I could go, I mean, why didn't IG11's legs melt off quicker? <laughs> like there's a lot of things you could say, I guess, but um overall i thought the episode was good i thought the humor in the beginning was good i was uh i thought i was I, i'm a jason jason sudeikis fan so i thought it was cool seeing him in there um i don't mind the cameos from like actors and stuff i know james you don't like that always in star wars right but not necessarily um, but yeah i i thought that was cool and uh jeff like you said before the humor was good and, and it flowed in well and it wasn't too over the top uh so because i was a little nervous about that with taika with td because i'm not a huge ragnarok fan i guess but i am oh my god i've never oh, laughed know, harder than at ragnarok <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah so i mean I, I didn't know how it would play especially i was like it's gonna be the season finale and it's just gonna be this like comic fest like i don't know but i i really dug it and um i'm, I'm i like what they've uh left off with so um, do, do what? you guys want to talk about the melting stormtrooper? What melting what? stormtrooper? When, oh, when, when they the throw him in the thing? In the... They throw him in the armory and his yeah. suit and body melts yeah. in seconds. Yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> not there five seconds later, not hanging out the side. His whole body yeah. disintegrates and is melted into that thing. Yeah. She does something we've never really seen though with stormtroopers. I don't. I don't. From what I can recall, I don't remember seeing a stormtrooper have the helmet broken like that. She yeah. smashes the front of the helmet, which is there was that nuts. happened in something else, and I forget what it was. But somewhere, in, it might have been Rogue One or something, where someone got hit in the jaw. A stormtrooper got hit by something, and there was like half their mask was off. And I, I can't, I can't pull it. I'll have to. I'll hit you up if I remember what it was. But I remember seeing that thing that happened once before. But you're right, that doesn't happen. Um, but, um, all right. So do you guys want to look ahead or just, uh, have a little fun quickly speculating on what we think, where we think this series is going. We leave off with the dark saber, Moff Gideon alive, thankfully, uh, st- still, still around. Uh, so Jeff kick us off. Um, you know, you don't have to worry about it. We don't know what's happening. So just <coughs> speculate away and what you think or where you want us to go or uh, whatever your thoughts are. Um, I see. I struggled with this earlier, and I still don't totally know. Um, I, 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 Moff Gideon will obviously be a big player. I'll just say what I want to see. I obviously Cara Dune is kind of teaming up with Griff Karga, and I, I hope we see more bounty hunters that we recognize or more bounty hunter characters. Um, I like that for kind of the side quest as, as they kind of move along here. I don't know what they're going to be going after. I guess it's more of Moff <clears throat> Gideon going after uh, Mandalorian with Baby Yoda. 
I don't know. It's 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 tough. It, it's it's tough to know where it goes, and that's kind of what I like is that I don't have an idea. Uh, is that I I don't know what the exact di- like direction of the beginning of the next season will be. It, it's mm-hmm. it's kind of a mystery box right now because he's just back on the run, but this time he has someone very serious going after him, not just bounty hunters. But I do like the notion that there is a direct tie with him having the saber. And looking yeah. for Baby Yoda's powers is that it takes it into a, a different realm with the Dark Saber that we haven't totally seen uh, in in uh, on, on Clone Wars and, and 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 Rebels. But I also do hope we see some flashbacks. I, I we are very much set up if we talk about the Siege of Mandalore and we talk about uh, at least leading up to that. Uh, we 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 are very set up to see Obi Wan flashbacks. Which it does seem as though they're very keen on tying things in. I'd be very surprised if we did see Obi Wan at some point, just based on the fact that it's going to be a series, and we we've, we've seen the tie. We saw the the tease to this upcoming season of Rebels, or excuse me, Clone Wars. We saw a literal tie in the day before Rise of Skywalker. Uh, so mm-hmm. I I again, this is coming from someone who said I don't want to see too many Jedi, but that's why I'm prefacing with I, I'm okay with a flashback because I do want to get a little taste of of Obi Wan. Uh, uh, Ewan McGregor back as Obi Wan, even just like seeing him back in the day with the Mandalorians, like the live action version of that, like that is pretty cool. That it's would be cool, neat. yeah, yeah, especially with the effects they have now that they could pull it off. Yeah, um, and it's also interesting, you know, Filoni could be, you know, telling Favreau as they're making season one, like, look, season seven of Clone Wars is going to be this, 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 and we can wrap around it and sandwich it with season two of Mandalorian <laughs> with this, this, this. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> you have <laughs> Filoni as your executive producer, and he's the guy creating Clone Wars, so it's just. You know, the connection is just right there. Um, uh, my curiosity, and this is just my speculation has been just all over the place on this. I went from it's going to have zero ties to the Rise of Skywalker because I want it to be separate to now it clearly does with the healing force power thing. Um, all the way to the point where I'm like, does this have anything to do? Because these people were all Imperials, including Werner Herzog, who I'm devastated is killed off. I thought he was great. Every Very word sad. out of his mouth was fantastic. <laughs> I, I want to see the baby. You know, I love that. But, um, you know, he was, uh, were they looking for this power to help bring back the emperor? Because his, his, it was all about regenerating himself. And that's what this healing power was. And that's the immortality that Palpatine was always after through uh, Plagueis. So uh, I'm still not closing the door on that yet. Um, so that's where I'm, I'm hoping we see more of. I am still a little nervous about Baby Yoda just really overshadowing everything because you're not killing him now, and he's not going anywhere. So it looks like he's going to be here for the long haul. Can we get a name for him? Can we just they get s- a name yeah, so they it's not said, Baby Yoda? Yeah, Carl Weathers said it had a name, and I don't know if he... I want a name. I want to know what his home planet is, and I want to know what his species is. If we get those three answers... Good luck on those, though. Yeah, I don't want the other two. Why? They say that you need to bring it home. But I yeah. like the mystery. George Lucas always liked the mystery of Yoda. I like the mystery, so. too. But, it, okay, forget the other stuff. Can you just give it a name so people yeah, sure. can stop calling it Baby Yoda? Like, I'm so sick of it. It's Does another it have year to be, of Baby yeah. Yoda. Does it have to start with a Y? No. <laughs> yeah, it'll be anything. Yoda. Mm, yeah. um, it'll forever be Baby young, Yoda. I think I think young we're just... <laughs> Shut up, Jeff. God. <laughs> and I'm not even, and I'm not even like. Uh, there was a point midway through this this series this season. I was like, oh man, like this is, this is a Baby Yoda thing. And Baby Yoda is now Jeff. If they, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, <laughs> call him Jeff. He is. He's now. But Jeff. I, there was a, there was a point where like, oh man, this is a thing. There's there's the mainstream thing that it's always gonna be Baby Yoda, even though the show is great despite the fact he doesn't do much. But yeah, I think, right. I think we're, we're very far past. And how they have made toys that can be released now is still the most mind-blowing thing with the show. It's, yeah. it's insane. <laughs> insane. It of all yeah. franchises to not have toys ready. Wild. Yeah. Well, Favreau said like they played ball and they were probably, Disney was probably pissed. Bob Iger was probably pissed. And he's like, no, you trust me. You got to preserve this. And they're like, all right, Favreau, you made us $5 billion with these other movies. You know what? We'll wait three months on the toys. Yeah. Um, right. But you know what's funny though, Lacey? Um, they could name it and call it like whatever, but like our moms and whatever is still going to be like Baby Yoda. No. It's Baby. No, but yeah, I, I agree. We, <coughs> we need a name at this point. We got to name it. Um, James, where are we going with the uh, season two, man? Um, well, I do like that now we have a little bit more of an established over our arcing villain, right? 
Um, yes. I, I, that, I don't see that character being killed in the first few episodes of the second season. I think they're setting him up to be someone that people are like, dang, that guy sucks. And he's like something to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, the fact that he has the dark saber too, I think is really crazy. And I hinted, I talked about it a little bit before, but whoever wields that sword is the rightful ruler of Mandalore. And that is a messed up situation. Um, because you have this guy who's fiercely devoted to his, his, uh, um, what do they, what do they call it now? Clan? Is it, or, uh, yeah, he's willing to die for it. Yeah. And, and now if he sees that it, it's going to totally flip him because this is supposed to be his villain, but it's also supposed to be his like religious leader, you know, to a, to a degree. And it's like, man, mm-hmm. I, I don't know what that's going to, uh, do for the story uh, in the next season, but I really like that that is such a clash right there. You know, that's so cool to me. Um, but yeah, nothing about Yoda, you know, or baby Yoda. Uh, what was he? A, is he a clone? What were they doing with them? What's that pars doctor guy? Pershing. What's his st- Pershing? Yeah. What's, what was the story with that? I don't know. Yeah. That's yeah, that's true. I I don't so know either. One there might thing, still I, be more that they could do in season two that they could open that up, but it almost feels mm-hmm. like they're like, I eh, don't worry about that. Like there's a throwaway line in this episode that's like, or it was in last week's episode. They're like, he doesn't appear to be genetically enhanced or something, and then he turns it to Gina yeah. Carano, and it's like she, however, looks great. Right. Like, she does look this? great. <laughs> Is that not, not great. hitting on her? Right. <laughs> like. Yeah. Um, this angel, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like I need to know what they wanted Baby Yoda for, though. I hope they don't just re- sweep that on the rug because they put him under yeah. a scanner, and I was like, are they doing a midichlorian measurement as like a mm-hmm. this is for you, George? Like we're bringing back midichlorians? I don't know. <laughs> but I, 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 we'll he was on answer. set. You think so, Jeff? <laughs> I, 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 we'll, we'll get the answer. I don't know how quickly yeah. we'll get it, but we'll, we'll definitely get it. Yeah, they, they have to. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll crumble the show. Basically, it'll, it'll make it kind of pointless and stupid. Well, I, I think they're, they're, they're too smart right now with this. And as we found out today, Favreau tweeted out, and it got a billion likes in like three seconds. That they're bringing it back officially uh, this coming fall, twenty twenty. Um, and he posted a model of a Gamorrean guard or a thinned out, more svelte, strong Gamorrean guard yeah. type of uh, character. So does that say Tatooine to you guys necessarily, a revisit there? or, no. or is that, that something says Coliseum else? to me. Gladiator? Yeah. Okay. He does have the weird sandals on. Very Maximus. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I saw. I, I saw that and I go, that looks like someone that he's going to have to fight when he inevitably gets trapped and thrown into some sort of like gladiator situation on a planet. Interesting. All right. Um, so that, I guess that's pretty much it. Any final thoughts on uh, this episode before we wrap it up? We can think we cover everything. I, I'm happy. Lacey, that's did all I you, can say. I like the show. Did you say where it was going? <laughs> she just said she wanted a name for Baby Yoda. I just oh, want a name right. for Baby Yoda. I think you guys basically said where it's going to go. They're yeah. going to be... Running away from the bad guy, bad guy searching <laughs> after them while finding their blasters, uh, <laughs> ships, hyperspace. Lacey just wants it. a lot more Cara Dune and a name for Baby Yoda, I think. Yeah. Cara yeah, Cynthia basically. Dune. I love Gina Carano so much. Uh, did you guys see her pick up Pedro Pascal? Not Pedro Pascal, probably uh, John Wee's grandson. That was the scene she was talking about, how she kept doing it and picking him up, picking him up. Oh, that like, was that have scene? To do this. Yes. Well, she did like how many times? Like 20? She said she did it like 20 times. And then they were right. like, you don't have to keep doing this. And she was like, no. She, well, yeah. all right. So let me ask you this then, Lacey, because you've been hyping her up since the beginning. Did she, even though she wasn't in? Yeah, everybody epi- joined my train. Right. I've been there since day one. Right. <laughs> yes. Called it culture. Right. <laughs> uh so okay. she wasn't in as many episodes as we were hoping for, but did she? Yeah. Did the character live up to what you were expecting overall? Yes, she was awesome. I think my one of my favorite scenes was when she was fighting that guy. It was one of my favorite scenes. <laughs> oh, the MMA fight. Yes. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I just liked how she was snarky. She was straightforward. I liked when she gave it to Mando in the village, where she was like, "You could just go stay here. You don't have to do this Mando right. thing. Like, what's yeah. wrong with staying with this beautiful woman?" And he's just Is- like, "Nah, dog." Is her weapon not 
an e-web heavy repeating blaster cannon? She's like, no. right? It wasn't an e-web. It was more of just like, I want to say a Tommy gun, but it's not a Tommy gun because it's not no. the 1920s. But it was something out of Predator from like Jesse Ventura, where they just mowed stuff down <laughs> like Gatling style. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it just looked um, like a machine gun. No, yeah, because she brought up she brought same. up that weapon and well, yeah. it felt the same yeah. to me when she was inside shooting out as when the Mandalorian went and grabbed that thing. Yeah, you know what I'm talking I about. I think he there went and was, it. yeah, and I think that there was a moment where she's like, I can't leave you here. That I was like, are they hinting that eventually there could be a romance going on? Like, because right. there was this mm. moment that it was a little bit more than friendly. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. I like that they're just friends. I know everyone likes to ship people and all these things. I like that they're just friends. Yeah. So I hope that now. dynamic stays. Yeah, I would not but like I think that. Gina w- yeah, <laughs> I think Gina is amazing. Scared. I think she did a great job. I would love to see more of her in season two. Mm-hmm. I don't think I got enough of her in the first season, but I think they were trying to set up a lot of plot lines that they needed to space it out a little bit. So mm-hmm. um, the other thing I hope for in season two is that the episodes are 49 minutes each and they're not these 23 <laughs> yeah. minute episodes like they were in season one. I That's was pumped fair. to see a 49 minute time for this episode. I, I agree. Sure. I was too. Um, that was the first thing I noticed when I popped it on and checked. Yes. So I agree with you. I was like, yes, 49 minutes. Yeah, just sit back and just be like, all right, this is going to be a slow yeah. burn. Let's go. Yeah. Um, I agree. All right, guys. Um, this has been our longest Mando fan show, but because we had to wrap up a lot of things. And longest episode, longest recap. Yeah. Um, first off, Jeff, I want to thank you so much for joining us. I know you're of under course. the weather. I appreciate you stepping up to the plate and having your Michael Jordan game uh, <laughs> on the Mando fan show for us. So, uh, why don't you let everyone know if they don't already where they can find you on uh, Twitter and um, what you do with uh, LCB and all that kind of thing? Yep, movie podcast, lights, camera, bar stool. Um, just a classic run of the mill movie pod. <laughs> Talk about news, review movies, <laughs> and then you can find me at Jeff D. Lowe, at lights, camera, pod on Twitter, all that. Uh, we're 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 not that serious. I'll put it that way. But we also do we do our own breakdowns and recaps as well. Um, right. And I, I think uh, I think I'm about to start binging Rebels and uh, Clone Wars again. Uh, that, that's, nice. that's, that's my last nice. word. I'm very excited to do that. I'm very excited for Clone War uh, Reb- Clone Wars to come back. Yeah, uh, on, on Disney Plus. I'm very. I forgot it was February, which now seems kind of far away, but still. Right. Uh, very pumped for new Star Wars content yet again. Yeah. Right on. Um, James, how about you, buddy? Uh, you guys know Twitter and Instagram at Myra Trunks. Um, that's the best place to talk to me about Mandalorian, Star Wars, Rebels, Clone Wars, all that stuff, right? And Apple. Oh, Apple, of course. Yes. Yes, always. Uh, Lacey? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin, where I love Gina Carano. Yes. Yes, you do. And you would love for her to punch you in the face. <laughs> I would. You know what? <laughs> there are a lot of people I would let punch me in the face, but she's definitely at the top of the list. She would not be on the top of my list, for sure. You know uh, what? Yeah. If she knocked me out, I'd be like, so be it. <laughs> I had this moment. Um, you guys can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey, hoping nobody punches me in the face, and over at <laughs> StarWarsNewsNet.com uh, every day. And you should be going to Star Wars News Net for all your Star Wars news anyway. Uh, you guys can find us on the Resistance broadcast every Monday and Thursday. Uh, we'll be back on the Resistance broadcast on officially back with regular episodes on Monday, January 6th. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, I want to thank our patrons. We wouldn't be able to do this show uh, without you guys. So uh, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. Thank you all so much for all of your support, especially our generals. Uh, that is Carmelo, Brian Shalito, Andrew Staley, Neil Lowry, Jeremy Myers, Neil Shaw, David Probus, John Reese, J.G. Kars. Seth Kaim, Micah Harrison, and Val Trichkoff. Thank you so much for all of your support. You're the reason why this show happens. Can't thank you enough. Uh, thank you to everyone who has been a Mando Fando with us on this eight-episode run of the Mando Fan Show. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll see you soon. We're going to do one more episode where we recap the entire season. Uh, I believe Clayton Sandell from ABC News is going to be joining us to do that. We're not exactly sure when we're doing it, but it'll be soon. So don't worry about that. Good luck to everyone who entered the Mando Code contest. And again, we'll see you on the Resistance broadcast real soon. So until then, Happy New Year, and we'll see you around, kids. Bye.